Okay, so let's get started. Uh, welcome to the, this week's edition of the 10X Business Owners Mastermind Call. Uh, my name is John Pyron, the business doctor. I'm glad to be here. And uh, today's going to be interesting because I have two special guests here, Alan Reeves, who's also my co-host, and then Allison Pyron. And these two people, this is going to be episode two of five on how to start a business. And even if you have a business already running, these are the two, probably the two most critical components of growing your business and making sure that it works consistently, and that is technology and human talent. So first thing we're going to do, let me um, make you a co-host here, Mr. Allen. Why, thank you, John. And do the same thing for Allison here. Okay. Um, okay. So let's deep dive into uh, you first, Alan. So uh, Mouse Calls out of Nashville, Tennessee has been around 20, going on 25 years and has absolutely dominated in the space of the solo entrepreneur. So a company that has one employee is up to 10 is typically the space. And you guys dominate the space. I mean, you have well over almost 500 clients in this space. You guys have a system in place and a process in place to really take uh, the headache out of being a small business owner. And so the one thing that I will tell you from personal experience as a small business owner, if you're under 10 employees, technology is a great tool and will help you succeed massively. But if you're having to waste a half hour to an hour or you know whatever trying to fix a problem, that is going to cost you a lot of money because typically you're the you're the 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 secretary, you're the salesperson, you're the marketing person, you're you wear all these different hats, and maybe you're at a point where you've got three or four employees. The last thing you want to do is spend time managing your technology. Uh, and, and getting help when you actually need it. And so one of the things I want to drill in with you today, Alan, is uh, the different aspects of service that is important for that small business owner to accomplish the major goal, which is no computer problems. Okay, I need to be able to work and not have any problems. And when the problems happen, I need to get it fixed. And so uh, you guys have three different VIP plans. And so what I'd like to do is describe for me your top tier VIP, B, VIP plan, okay? And for those of you that are listening to the podcast or watching this uh, recording, we're not going to do a sales pitch here, okay? I just want to – because I helped design these three plans, and we did this for you and mine. And so the different components of these plans are very important, so I'm going to ask questions about why those things are important. And uh, because you don't get 400 and uh, over 450 people to buy this without it being valuable. And so on the top tier VIP plan, what is all included? So just to set a scope and there, there's a method behind everything that we do. Um, but the number one thing that we do across the board that, that I, I don't know another IT company anywhere that standardizes on this. But every, every machine that we cover, we back it up. And this could be, you know, this could be our, our largest client out West. This could be, uh, uh, you know, a retiree that's, that's got a home office and they call it their home office, but, you know, they check stocks and email once or twice a day, um, da you know, just down the hill here. Backup is so unbelievably critically important. Um, and we learned that, I mean, we knew it, but it really hit home in 2010 when Nashville suffered a catastrophic flood. And we did not have one client on a service plan, even back then, that lost any data, not one. We, we dealt with a lot of people that, that did. Oh, it was, it was awful. But um, we include backup in every single plan that we have up to one terabyte per device, which is nuts. You may not know much about uh, storage and measurements, but that's, that's a lot of backup for, you know, guaranteed for each device. So that's number one. Um, number two 
is you get, everybody gets a push button uh, that plugs into your computer. Um, if you need to get with us, uh, you're having a problem, you press the button, it knows who you are, you tell it what's going on, and that creates a ticket in our system. Or you can just pick up the phone. But at the end of the day, all that remote support, that help desk, that virtual IT department is included in the plan as well. You could use it for, you could use it for, you know, 10, 10 minutes a month. You could use it for 10 hours a month. It's all included. We're not nickel and diming. Um, that high level plan also includes unlimited on-site troubleshooting. Now, I want to make clear that's not project work. That's not elective work. But if you have a device that is uh, just completely down, then we come on site at no charge and repair it. If it cannot be repaired on site, then we pull it back into a laboratory environment after about 30 minutes or so. Uh, $1 million in identity theft protection underwritten by AIG. That is something that we cover everybody with. Uh, so those are the core pieces that make it up. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's kind of a, you can consider it kind of a personal cybersecurity and IT support suite, if you will. There's a gentleman, there's a gentleman named Paul Dipple who's famous in the IT service industry. And John, you, you're aware of this and, and many of the listeners. Yep, he owns a company not. called Sir, Sir, Service Leadership. Yes. And Paul Dipple basically documented the fact that as a company increases in size from solopreneur up to enterprise, there are really seven different ways, depending on their size and their budget, that you can successfully deploy IT services. And if, if, that, if that company is 10 people or less, most IT companies have never figured out how to do that successfully and, and still make money on it. So they don't. Or, or they quote something exorbitant. For example, um, we, had, we had a prospect reach out to us back three or four months ago, and they had an executive that was retiring and moving into a home office. This guy was going to be independent of the company he was retiring from. All he wanted was pretty much exactly what I described. He wanted to be able to have that peace of mind that he had when he was an executive with this company. He wanted that, that backup. He wanted somebody that he could just reach out to and boom, they're there. He wanted that protection. And he reached out to a local competitor of ours and they quoted him $1,200 a month for one person with one computer in one office because they don't know or they don't understand how to deliver what we can at the level we can. And we do traditional IT as well. We, you know, we'll service... Uh, companies that have, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60, 75 employees. But with John's help, we figured out years ago how to really craft something that works at, as far as service delivery and budgetability for these companies that are really trying to get off the ground. So um, when it comes to, and then you guys have antivirus included in there. Oh, absolutely. You guys take care of all the all the patches and the maintenance. And, and basically what that is uh, for for those out there that are listening to this recording on the podcast channel. And by the way, if you're not a part of the podcast channel, go uh, look up 10X Mastermind Group uh, on um, uh, Google, on iTunes. It's called 10X Mastermind Call. And, and that's the podcast channel. So you can listen to this as you're going. But um, – the one thing is 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 being able to um, if you drive a car, right? So when you first buy a car, you, it's like buying a brand new computer. Everything works, everything is good. Still needs to be set up, kind of customized. You still got to whip out the owner's manual and read it, and that sort of thing. And 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 that's basically, you know, setting up your computer, installing applications, things like that. Once that's set up, <clears throat> then. Um, your computer is just like a car. It, it has certain intervals where it needs to have an oil change. It needs to have its tires rotated. It needs to have um, 
you know, the 15,000 mile service, the 20,000 mile service, et cetera, et cetera. And if you don't do that and you don't do the maintenance on it, you're going to start having big problems that cost you a lot of money with your car. And, and having the right provider provide the right service is what's going to pay off. I'll give you an example. Um, I bought a car in 2001. Okay. Uh, bought it brand new off the lot. Uh, took it in uh, to the same place for maintenance from the day I had it. Same mechanic. His name was Flash. Okay. His actual name is Brett, but he goes by Flash because he's a drummer. He likes he likes the drummer name, right? And he was the only guy allowed to touch the car. And and everything ran perfectly smooth. That car had never had a single problem with that car. Okay. And and four years ago, I bought a different car. And um, uh, the guy that had been doing all the maintenance on it ended up, when COVID hit, he lost all of his employees. So literally, he couldn't really operate. So I had to go and find a different company and and thought I found the right company. I mean, everything looked good, you know, um, <clears throat> but the um, the right – I should have paid attention to the fact that they had uh, 27 bays – uh, at the shop, right? And they had all this overhead, all these employees basically became a cookie cutter approach. And so I took it to the maintenance. I, hey, every time the thing car told me, hey, it was time for maintenance, I took it in. No questions asked. Here you go, right? Well, then I took it in, I think that what Allie was like three months ago. And, and they, uh, hey, it's time for the oil change. So I go and take it in for the oil change. I come back with a laundry list of almost $8,000 in stuff that was quote unquote missed, you know? And they go, hey, uh, whoever's been doing the maintenance on this thing, you know, should have caught this all along. I'm like, you guys are the one doing the damn maintenance, you know? And so I can't tell you in the computer space, what does this have to do with computers, John? Can tell you the importance of finding a reputable company that has been doing it for a long time that can actually verify and show you what's going on um, and check their references. And so the thing I like about uh, clients that I've recommended to mouse calls is you guys do a, a very thorough job. Patches are the oil change. Uh, updates are the oil change. Uh, there's different things that you can do within your computer to prevent problems from happening in the first place because as a small business owner, the last thing you want is to have a problem when uh, when you need it the most. And it usually always happens you know, you're on a deadline, you're trying to print something, whatever, and you don't have support. So um, at minimum, as a – when your company is between one and ten employees, most of the time you don't really need a server. Uh, you need to connect with mouse calls and have them service it. Once you get to ten or more computers, you're going to need a centralized server as a business. You're going to want to protect your data. You're going to want to uh, be able to centrally control everything. The last thing you need, especially if you live in California – is one of your employees going across the street, opening up a business and taking all your client data. And and guess what? You know, it happens all the time. But if you don't have network security and controls in place, and that's where making sure that you have a good, solid technology plan. So let me land the plane here. As a small business owner, if you're between one and ten computers, you need to have somebody supporting your stuff. Last thing, you you, you got too many hats you're wearing – you know, to have to deal with this. <clears throat> Once you get to 10 or more, you need to have an annual technology plan. You need to have um, a disaster recovery plan. You need to have that tested. They need to prove to you that they can back up your data because it only matters when a disaster happens. You don't need car insurance until you get into a car accident, okay? You don't need homeowner's insurance until the fire happens. But you can't go to the insurance company and go, hey, 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 the house is burning down. Can I get insurance now? You know, um, hey, I just got into a car accident. Now I think I want that extra coverage that you've been trying to talk to me about. Don't let that be you. I can tell you story after story after story of how many times I've had heartbreaking conversations with business owners who lost all their stuff. Okay, literally less than, I don't know. When did I talk to Rio? Like an hour ago, okay? Um, it, it, it's not a computer, but cell phone, okay? And you guys cover cell phones too. And so the thing is, is is he's like, 
sitting around on Saturday relaxing, and all of a sudden he hears thunk, 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 thunk. Hey, man, where's my cell phone? You know? And he's like, oh, crap. He left his cell phone in the pocket of his shorts that he put in the washing machine. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, so he goes and gets, poor guy, man, goes and gets it. He has to go get a new cell phone. Well, it wasn't being maintained. He's going to be calling you, by the way, because he needs to have that stuff maintained. <laughs> but he's like, uh, yeah, I, I was able to get a new cell phone. That's not the big part. It's the freaking backup, man. I lost a ton of photos. Yeah, you know, and his business is highly dependent upon photos. And so don't let that be you. Okay. Don't step over dollars to pick up pennies. And I see too many small business owners wasting too much time trying to troubleshoot their own crap, trying to be the IT person when they all they need to do is just pick up the phone. So uh go to mousecallsonline.com and um and mention that you saw the um um you know, that you were referred from this call and uh, they'll take really good care of you. So any other things that you want to add for the small business owner as it relates to technology for a business? I'm just going to expand very, very quickly on your car analogy because it's a good one. Let's let's add something to that mix. There are, let, let's just pretend for a minute that there are people out there that are walking around parking lots and they are taking the locks out of your cars, replacing them with their own locks that only they have the key to, and charging you a ransom to be able to access your own car again. Basically, they're charging you thousands of dollars to give you your own locks back so you can unlock your car and use it. That's what's happening out there. That's what just happened to the Colonial Pipeline that's, that was in the news all last week, where they had to shut down and drove crazy gas shortages and outages in the South. Their computer network was hit with what's called ransomware. And hackers got in and there's all kinds of ways they get in, but hackers got in and they encrypted the data for that organization's accounting department and prohibited them from operating. They charged a $5 million ransom, which was paid just so they could begin billing customers again. And Mm -hmm. what I run into, John, is the small business owner has this mentality. A lot of them have the mentality of, well, I'm small potatoes. That can't happen to me. It's the opposite. It's the opposite. Happens all the time. You're actually, you know, you don't think Colonial Pipeline had mechanisms in place and a budget to protect them from things like this? And they got hit anyway. The small guy typically has nothing that's very robust, or they think that, or they they presume that OneDrive is a backup, which it's not. OneDrive can be a ransomware vector as well. They think that iCloud has everything. It doesn't. So, you know, th- these are things that these are things that you've got to think about. Just the the, the same way that you think about uh, insurance. You know, you you. You don't typically, if you're going to insure your business and and you've got some degree of operational maturity, you typically don't go, okay, what is the absolute least amount I can get away with covering for my business? And oh, by the way, well, if I've got these big deductibles or I've got a massive liability hole here, I'm going to live with that. That's probably not the way you're thinking about things. And, and And if that is the way you're thinking about things, you've got bigger problems than I can solve. But that is that is something that I, I go to with everybody. If you if you are in any sort of commercial enterprise, I don't care if you're if you're bringing in forty thousand dollars a year, you need an IT budget of some sort. I couldn't have said it better myself. So, I want to welcome uh, Celeste to the call. And um, uh, any questions that you have, any business challenges that you have, just put it in the chat window, and we're going to open this up for uh, live Q and A here in a second. I uh, want to get to uh, Allison real quick, and so thanks, Alan. I appreciate it. I um, want to get to Allison real quick, and let's talk about the importance of assessing uh, current and existing employees. It's two things I want to I cover, assessing current and existing employees, 
And then I want to talk about, okay, how do you make sure you have the right fit for new employees coming on board? So a lot of businesses, when they get to around – probably around the – Two hundred fifty, five hundred thousand dollar range. They're going to start hiring their first, second, or third employee. So, depending on the business, could be sooner than that. And what I witnessed, what I witnessed, Scott, for so many years is here we are. We're at a million dollars. We're we're at a million and a half. We've got twelve, thirteen, fourteen employees, and you know now we're looking to hire another one. When in reality, you really don't. And what what I find, and you have discovered this this year on on another client, is most business owners don't have a great hiring process. Most business owners don't properly assess people before they bring them on the team, and then they bring them on the team, and they start giving them a bunch of work that does not leverage their strengths, talents, or abilities, and the employee ultimately ends up being there for a paycheck. They're not maximizing their 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 potential, and so what what are some of the things that you can share that would address let's uh, let's address the companies that already have employees right now. You already have employees. Like I, I'm going to call this guy this afternoon. He has um, what 21 employees, something like that, and we know a friend of ours that works there. And he says the guy's an ass. Okay, <laughs> okay. The guy, the guy has nothing but constant turnover, constant turnover in the operations area, and he can't figure out why. You know, and uh, and so address something like that. How would you go about? What's what? What are some of the things that you can do, or or a way that you would tackle that problem with that owner? What advice would you give that owner? You're on mute. Sorry about there that. I think the first thing you need to do is um, I think we, you know, we've discovered you have to sit down with the owner first and kind of work through what's going on with him and get him to understand himself a little bit more. I know you have had to face that um, in the past with your own business. And so getting to understand um, how the owner, <laughs> how the owner communicates, doesn't communicate, um, you know, the, the owner's going to set the, the tone. And so um, they're the ones who have to be, you know, the, the communicator, um, even if it's their challenge. And so uh, for me, it would be sit down with the owner first, assess them, give them the information about themselves and how they communicate to others, how others communicate to them um, and give him that insight first. I think that's going to be the biggest struggle in, in speaking about this client that we're talking about. Um but then it's also coming in and finding out, okay, do you have the right employees in the right positions? As you were saying, um, you see a lot of people who just, uh, I know personal people who've taken the assessment and, uh, and they're just, it's not what they're interested. It's not what motivates them. It's not what drives them every day, um, but they need a paycheck. And so they're out there, they're going to do what they have to do to have a job but are they meeting the potential that, you know, that's out there for them? Probably not. And so it's then going and assessing, you know, your, uh, your staff and finding out, okay, where are you lacking in, you know, he's trying to fill these positions, but maybe you have someone on staff who would be better fit um, for that, for that job. So, you know, that's where the assessments will come in and, and finding out, are, you know, are you really reaching the potential of, of your, your employees that you have? And just to kind of give you an idea, uh, Mr. Business Owner out there that's listening to this or watching this, I uh, highly recommend you go to um, – if you're on the podcast, go to the YouTube and, and, and watch this video because I'm going to share this assessment here real quick. Um, and so this is an individual uh, – I'm not going to go into it, but this is the type of information you're going to get. Okay, It's going to give you a narrative of this person's behavioral – characteristics. It's going to break it down. It's going to give you things like the value that this person brings to the organization. 
customized for them. It's going to give you a checklist for communicating. How should you communicate with them? This is the this is probably this one, and the next page, which is ways not to communicate, is the time is the one that we spend the most time on, just simply because if you can get your employees to communicate with each other in their language, then they're going to have a lot more. Uh, they're going, to, they're going to connect a whole lot more. They're going to get a lot more done. They're going to be a lot more productive. And a lot of people think that they can communicate to someone else, a coworker, uh, their boss. The boss thinks that they can communicate with their employees any way they want, and they're going to motivate that person. Not true. It's like you knowing Spanish and trying to speak to somebody that only speaks English. You're not going to connect. They may catch a few words here or there, but you're not going to have any connection. And so – this right here, understanding how to communicate to that person, if you're trying to motivate your employee, it's, in, it's important for you to, to talk to them in their language, not the other way around. Uh, ways not to communicate. You know, if you continue to treat them this way, you're going to continue to get a lack of performance. And so it kind of gives you that cheat sheet of what not to do. And then communication tips on how to uh, communicate. There's a couple other things in here. Everybody has a D, I, S, and C score. It depends on where you fall on this. But having this information about your person is going to help you. Uh, it's going to give you also how they waste time. You know, If you see them doing any of this stuff, this is the possible causes. This is the possible solutions, areas for improvement. Uh, it's going to tell you what their top behavioral strengths are. In this case, this person's persistence is the number one, consistent, following policies. Go all the way down to the lowest one. Urgency, still highly developed, but some people, when they're down here 11 and 12, they fall below this yet this red line, which means this is not – like if, if, if her urgency was, a, was, was 10, and I'm super frustrated with her because she's not getting crap done the way I want her to get it done fast enough, guess what? You're spinning your wheels. She is never going to get it done, okay? and you can just stop being upset about it. Give her different types of things. So it'll give you the feedback that you li that you understand, and it tells you, is this person happy? This person is a, a conducting supporter, which is a natural here. The closer you are to the center, the more adaptable this person can be to everybody. This is perfect profile for an operations person, perfect profile for a business management person. But where she's at right now, she ain't happy because she's having to adapt her behavior way too much. And it's like stretching a rubber band. So having this information on your employee is going to be very super duper valuable. Driving forces, Allison. Why is driving forces even more important? So driving forces, um, it's going to be what motivates that person to get up every day and and do what they what they do. Um, you know what what is it that makes you get up at five a.m., John, to um, you know to do what you do every day when I want to get up at seven a.m. So um, it's really more of understanding, um, you know, what is going to be, uh, what, what's going to motivate them? How are you going to get these people to really work for you um, by understanding and knowing what motivates them? And so it gives you, breaks down what their driving forces are. How do you motivate this person? You know, what motivates them on a personal level? I can't tell you how many clients have gone into over the years including my own. I, w I started doing this in 2006 when Phil Bristol came in. I had 12 employees, and I couldn't understand why uh, I didn't like any of my employees except for maybe one or two, and they didn't like me, uh, and I had turnover. And Phil just basically said, you're an asshole. That's why. I'm like, whoa, what do you mean? I'm paying you to tell me this, by the way. <laughs> and I'm like – and so he goes – he shows the assessment. He's like, you you have a certain type of behavior characteristic, and you got to understand you cannot communicate with people uh, that don't have that behavior characteristic. So I learned a lot, and I had to change, and this gave me that. But now you know, I, here's my employees' potential strengths. Here's their weaknesses, and here's a big tip for you as a business owner. Stop giving work to the people in your employee that – doesn't leverage their strengths. You know, a lot of business owners go, well, you know, she should do this or he should do that. Well, if they're not going to be great at it, don't expect them. You, 
it's like pushing a wet noodle. You're not going to get there, okay? And so you want to give them work that maximizes their strengths, minimizes their weaknesses, and then how do you how do you energize them? Here's how you energize this person. Here's what's going to cause them stress. And we went we went up to a client that has 12 employees, and we had to rearrange uh, I think three or four people on the staff. Uh, had to get rid of two people and replace them with one. But that staff is running at peak performance now, better than they have in the 30 years they've been in business, because they got the right people doing the right things with the right motivation with the right strengths. And minimizing everybody else's weaknesses. Well, and, and what so that, we did that by assessing everybody. John, what that client was also realizing too is um, in some training that we did that this doesn't just apply to uh, themselves and how they they work amongst each other in, in a group and a team atmosphere. They started to realize, okay, well, this is going to reflect on how we answer our phone when we have an angry property manager on the other end of the line, um, how are we going to be able to communicate with them? So this this doesn't just uh, have to do with them personally and how they interact, but it also has to do with how it rolls over into somebody else on the other end of the line and how they, how they handle that phone call. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and and so when you have this, like this person, you want to you want to give that person work that feeds their top four driving forces. So each one of these, and I'm not going to go into the detail here. You can get more information. Just go to johnpyron.com uh, or send me a text at 916-741-0596, and I'll send you an assessment link for free, and you you have your own self debriefing guide. Um, but pretty much once it tells you, you know. Let's say this person is being expected to operate on a team. You know, they're expected to do a lot of collaboration with the team. Well, guess what? This person ain't, ain't motivated by it. <laughs> you know, I mean, you can put this person on a team all you want, and it's going to make them unhappy. You know, you can expect this person to be all harmonious and 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 be decorative, but if that's if that's her job, she's going to fail at it. Okay, she's going to fail at it miserably. But if I want her to be in charge of something, she's my go-to gal. She's passionate about that. I want somebody to have a good operating environment where everything is objective, everything is structured, everything has a place, everything is organized and and, and forth. She's my go-to gal. If I want somebody to get something done, I need to know that I need to be very intentional with her. She, If she knows what the mission is of the company, she'll help get it get it done. She's my research queen, high intellectual. I want to give her, you know, if I need something researched, she's my go-to person. Okay, I'm not going to give it to somebody who is instinctual. Okay, so those are just uh, why because this is her. She's not going to make decisions based on her gut. She's going to make decisions based on facts, dotting the i's and crossing the t's. This is my person I want, but having this information is going to be very important. The other thing that this will do is it will tell me, as an owner, um, this section right here. Here's the it takes behaviors and motivations and combines them together. And go here's the strengths. Here's the con- potential conflict with other team members or conflict with her if I approach her in this way or if I give her this type of work. But here's the ideal environment I need to put this person in if I want to get maximum value. I have a client right now. Uh, they're going on three years. They just started three years ago. They'll hit almost a million dollars this year. They're a civil engineering company. They've used this from day one. Every single person that they've hired has had to go through this, and they fit them in just like a little puzzle. And as a result, they only give them the work that they're doing, and that company – I'm having trouble hearing you. Oh, Apple Watch. Um, they're um, – they're doing almost 90% productivity out of that entire team. Super, super profitable. Okay. Why? Because they give people, they know they have this data. Okay. How do you motivate them? Here's how you do it. How do you how do you manage them? Here's how you do it. Okay. And then finally, what are their top competencies? Okay. Down here, if I want to put her in customer service, ain't gonna happen. Okay, probably the worst job I can give her is she needs appreciating others, not her strength. Okay, but if I want her to coach people, 
okay? And I want her to manage people. I want her to make decisions and not have to manage her, micromanage her. She's going to be my gal, okay? So again, when um, uh, when you're managing employees, right? When you're if your employees are not productive, if they're not super motivated, if they call in sick all the time, if they're they're watching the clock, if they show up right when their shift starts and leave right when the shift ends, if they're like, man, I got my ten minute break, I got my lunch, and they can't wait to leave, you probably need to do something like this because they're not motivated. Happy employees make you a ton of money in business. They become great employees. Too many business owners in this country settle for good employees, a body to fill the chair to do a job, but they don't make the investments into the growth of the people. And the, pe the difference between good and great is lots and lots and lots of money, lots and lots of freedom for you as a business owner. And so um, – Go read the book called Good to Great, and you'll know this. There's an entire section in that book on the on this type of stuff right here: assessing the right talent, putting the, the people in the right seat on the bus, and giving them the tools that they need to succeed. I will tell you this just for now. Alan, Alan's been in business is a very long time and has had lots of employees over the years. If you don't invest in your people, don't expect them to invest in you. Okay. If you're not going to invest in your people and help them succeed, they're not going to help you succeed. And so these are just some tools that you can do to maximize that. What other thoughts uh, in closing, Allison, do you would you want to make sure that the audience knows about the people that they have on staff or the people that they're going to bring on? Well, I mean, if you, you know, if you're looking to to really optimize your business and grow your business. Um, you want to have the right people in place. Those are the people who are going to provide, um, you know, you always see business owners who are afraid to leave. They're afraid to go on vacation. They're afraid to, to live a life and their business becomes their life because they don't have that trust in who they've hired and who they've, um, you know, put in place. And so this, it gives that, that, um, that employee uh, that confidence in how to communicate with their boss. And it also gives, you know, that employer the confidence in their employee so they can leave. So they have the trust that, no, okay, I'm able to walk away for a week and know that their business is going to be successful because the right people are in place. So it's, you know, it's that trust value that will be there when you know you have the right person in, in that right position. And so um, uh, the last thing I want to mention, so thank you both. The last thing I want to mention is the most powerful way to uh, grow your business is through joint ventures. And so um, an example is right here, me and Alan Reeves. Okay. So Alan is going after a small business owner pretty much anywhere in the United States. Okay. He's got the entire technology uh, piece covered. He's got the entire employee technology piece covered and takes care of the employees to make sure that they are safe and secure both while they're at work and while they're not at work, okay, because identity theft protection is included in all of all the plans. Myself, strategy, planning, execution, accountability. Allison, it's maximizing human talent and human potential to get the most out of the people that work for you so that they're super duper productive, which makes them very effective, which allows you as a business owner to have the freedom that you're looking for. Joint venture is right here on the screen. All of us are going after the exact same client. And so if you're a small business owner and 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 you are you have any challenges, okay? Uh, or actually, let me state this question a different way. If you're a small business owner located anywhere in the United States and you have a professional service business, uh, this is the A team for you. So you can contact Alan, you can contact myself, you can contact Allison, um, and we will come in and we will hit your business from all different angles, all different angles, okay? And how you get there, you can do a couple of things. Number one, you can go to mousecallsonline.com and book a time to talk to Alan. You can go to johnpyron.com and you can book an appointment to talk to me. Um, 
And you can also send a text to 916-7410596. But if you haven't had your technology, I will I there's there's one thing I can tell you right now. I'm not a computer engineer. Okay, I know this. I've owned four IT companies. I've staffed a lot of engineers, and I still do not trust my decisions around technology. Okay. And so what I, if you have not had your technology evaluated, maybe you have one computer, maybe you have 50 computers. But if you are a business owner like myself, you're not an engineer. You, your IT company can tell you all they want. Everything is great. Life is good. We don't seem to have any problems until the problem happens. Okay? Because I went to have a scheduled call with you, Alan. I think it was like last week. And you're like, dude, I I got to reschedule, man. I'm on the call with with somebody that called me, and and I'm you know they're getting they're 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 having to deal with a problem in North Korea, you know, <laughs> right somewhere, man. And it's like, you know, but they had oh well they had an IT company, but I thought they were being taken care of, right? So if you don't have a if you've never had a second opinion, okay, Mouse Calls has a, a program called Second Opinion Service. You should have them evaluate your technology at minimum. They're going to either going to do one of three things. Your current IT company is doing a great job. Pat them on the back. Continue to pay the bill. Number two, uh, they're not doing a great job, and here's all the problems that they need to fix, and you need to go and have them fix them. Okay. Or number three, they're not doing a great job, and you're open to switching. Okay. That's the only three areas that you, you should have. You should do this at least once a year minimum. Even if you hire mouse calls, you should have somebody else come in, okay? And and, Because you're not an engineer as a business owner, okay? But all you're going to do by doing that is verify mouse calls knows knows their crap, and they know what they're doing, okay? So if uh, you're a business owner uh, and you have employees that guarantee you have problems and challenges and you're frustrated and there's things that keep you up at night, so hit me up. I'll uh, I'll chat with you for 10 minutes. If there's anything I can help you with or recommend somebody, be more than happy to. Uh, if you have employees, best thing you can do is get a hold of Allison and just go to johnpyron.com, book an appointment there. Have her assess your employees. She'll give you, the owner, an assessment for free. You know, it's just like high school, man. You know, here's your – never mind. I'm not even going to compare the analogy, but here's your first one for free, man. You know, but once um, um, once you have that assessment for free and do it do it on yourself, uh, you'll see the value. And then uh, she'll be able to talk to you about how she can uh, help you get all your employees on the right page. So hope this has been super helpful for you. Those are the three things I would recommend, the three pillars of your business you need to make sure you have under control. Otherwise, you're just gonna you're just gonna uh, plateau and you'll stay there for years. Um, you know, and and if that's what you want to do, and that's your business model. Then go for it. Be happy. But if you want to grow, you want to have a, a a profitable business company that runs without you. You need to bring on this team right here. Okay. So hope that's been helpful. Go out and make it happen, and uh, we'll chat with you guys later. Take care. <laughs>